All right, folks, I'm here at Nosler with Dakota, the expert. You've been watching this series where we're gonna build my 308 into an elk machine. And we talked about bullets, we talked about powders. Last one we talked about brass and, and casings. Now we're gonna talk about primers and priming. And this is where I probably ought to start paying close attention. <laughs> Yeah. Tell, tell me quickly about primers and, and just some selections and some ideas. Your, maybe you have opinions on primers. Yeah, there's, there's a few different things that make them up. Um, our load data calls out the type of primer that it is. And like in a 308 Winchester, that's a large rifle primer that yep. we put in there. Um, there's also large rifle magnum primers, which have a hotter ignition temperature on them. So I would stick to what our load data recommends right. every time. And if it's a Magnum cartridge, often we'll always recommend a Magnum primer, um, okay. so on and so forth. But the ignition temperature does matter. So if you have a load developed with a traditional large rifle primer and you switch to a Magnum, you can it's see higher pressure signs. Yeah, you can see higher pressure signs and higher velocity. So okay. not recommended unless you start load development from minimum with that component. Okay. So other than that, there's there's large rifle and then there's small rifle for rifle primers. Okay. So and that's dictated by the size of the cup itself on the primer, by the size of the diameter of the primer pocket. Okay. So um, 223 and the like is going to have a small primer, and anything that's usually on on the rifle size, that's like hunting applicable stuff, 243, 260, 308, all that uh -huh. stuff up is all large rifle. Correct. Okay. Um, so what do you got there? You got a... The Star CBS uh, hand priming tool. Um, these work pretty darn well for their job. You know, it's, it's okay. just a simple tool that uh, you seat your primers down into here in this with the anvil side up and then uh, slide, your, slide your case in there on your cartridge holder there, the show holder and then prime it. As you're priming it, keep it away from your face. It's a good that's idea. That's why we're wearing these. That's what you're always supposed to wear safety glasses, yeah, when you're working with anything that's so a percussion you just, explosive. Uh, what happened is a primer mm -hmm. went down into here, and as you squeezed that, you had an unprimed brass that's sitting correct. there. Oop. And then as you squeezed that, it forced mm -hmm. the primer up in. Yeah, you that. can actually see it if you, there we go. You can actually see the primer come up and be presented to where that normally where the case would be and there. Then so that goes right up inside and it's captured, yeah, by the, the shell holder down there that holds onto the rim, yeah. forces that in. So we'll do another one, exactly the same. And as you seat it, make sure it comes up firm pressure at the end. Mm -hmm. Make sure, what I always do as a safety check on everything is run my finger or thumb over the back of your cartridge case head okay. after your primer seated to be sure that it is flush or slightly beyond flush down into the case right. head. You don't want your primer proud at all because that will actually increase head space on the rifle so it'll change the length of the cartridge in there and make it hard to close the bolt if okay. you leave your primer sticking out. Right, and when you think about yeah. that because the bolt face yep. would be up against the primer yeah. then instead of... Absolutely, and these are Winchester primers that we're using, large rifle. Um, there are differences in primer cut cups themselves, so even with, say if you switch to a Federal 210 primer, um, you can see differences in accuracy, you can see differences in the dimension. If you take your set of calipers that are on your bench, you'll measure several thou difference in the outside dimension. And you'll note, if you switch primers, oftentimes to a Federal, it's a lot stiffer seating the primer into the, into the uh, primer pocket on the right. back of the brass. Okay. So they are larger and you will need more force to seat them in there. We do get some calls that people are, you know, that's really firm seating them in there. You want it firm because as that case head stretches from multiple firings over reloading it, it they will become softer. Okay. So sometimes the, the federal variety is, is actually a better way to start with. It's up to you. But uh, I like using them just because you sometimes get more firings out of your brass okay. with, uh, with federal primers because they are larger. Yeah. But I kind of have to let the rifle dictate too because they will show you different accuracy with uh, different types of primers. So if oh, you really? switch from federal to Winchester to CCI, they will show you different Everything accuracy. else being the same. Everything else being the same. You just change the primer and just, it'll... Yep. And it's always recommended that you start at starting charges when you come up through load development when you change primers because they do have different ignition to them. So okay. they can change your velocity and pressure signs. So I wouldn't recommend starting at the max charge and switching primers just to see what it does for accuracy because it can actually affect pressure as well. Okay. So Well, there you have it, folks. We took this piece of unprimed brass, and once Dakota runs it through the priming tool, now we've got a piece of prime brass 
that is getting us close. Not there, but we got a bit of work to do. Closer. But it won't be too long. We'll have this. It'll be there. Thanks for watching.